So if you've watched any of my videos on my programmatic SEO course or the silent film that I did a while back about creating a programmatic SEO website using WordPress, you'll know that I've used WP All Import. Uh, it's pretty much the go-to when it comes to making programmatic sites. But one thing when you're building sites with a lot of pages is that WP All Import physically creates all of those posts in the database, which can be problematic with WordPress when you get into the tens of thousands of pages. It can slow things down and when you want to re-import things, it can take some time. So recently I've been using a different plugin and I'm going to show you that today. It's called MPG or multi-page generator. And I'll put a link in the thread below to this. So what I like about this particular plugin is that we can also use the block editor in WordPress. So here I've created a template and it's the exact same template as the WP all import example that I posted a while back. The difference is this is built in the block editor, which means it's much easier to work with and to design a page. I've actually created a little block here using generate blocks to show you that you can actually style things up. This obviously isn't a great example. It's just a very quick rough and ready one, but you can create tables in here. You can do FAQs with proper drop downs and things. So you can use any of the blocks that you could use in WordPress. You can use in this template and that, and here there's a short code, which I'm going to show you in a second. So this is the template and I've stored this in posts. We'll leave that and go back to MPG here, and we're gonna create a new project. There's options here to set up with existing data sets that they've already provided. So there's things like World Cities, Plumbing Services, Locksmiths, things like that. But for this demo, we're gonna go from scratch. We're just gonna call it Calories. And the entity name we're looking at is Posts, because that's where we've stored our template. And then we can search for it. We load that up. We want to exclude this from crawlers and site loops so that it doesn't appear anywhere without the variables included. And we do want to, it to be part of search as well. Save changes. And that's going to give us an option here to provide a direct link to a source file. And this can be a CSV or a Google sheet. I've got a Google sheet ready, which is, I'm going to bring this over here. So this is the Google Sheet. It's the same as the original pretty much, but I've added an image col column here to show you how you can do images as well. And we've got all of our headings. So these are the variables that we're going to use in the post. And when the plugin creates those pages, it will inject these values into the post. We'll take the Google Sheet and we'll stick it in there. You can set how often you want it to check. You can do it live once every hour, twice a day, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever. I'm just going to go fetch and use. So that brings the data in. As you can see already, it's a lot quicker, I think, than WP All Import in terms of pulling the data in and showing you things. Now here you can create the URL. So this, this is the route that's going to be created. And when someone visits this route, we'll actually have it will take these variables and find the correct page. We don't want the ID. We don't want image. We don't want any of these really. I think we just want the slug because I created a slug specifically for this. So we'll get rid of that and that. And then here's the URL preview here, which is just the slug. Okay. When we save that, it's going to generate. And now we can see a list of all the URLs that it has created using our template. And that was, Compare that to WP All Import and how long it takes to generate the pages. We've already built the site. If I click here now, you can see it's already created how many calories are in bagel wheat. I don't know what bagels wheat is. I assume it's meant to be bagels and then in brackets wheat. But for this purpose, it's quite simple. It doesn't really matter. As you can see, it's created the post. It's pulled in the amount of grams of protein, how much fat it's got, carbohydrates, and it's built our little vitamin and minerals table as well. There's a lot of features that you can use in this plugin. For example, the short code here allows you to create lists that will link into specific pages within this set of data. So you can 
set conditions like if you only want for example it to be a specific food group you can do that this also accepts variables as well so as you can see here this shortcode which i generated from that tool is only going to show us a list of posts where the food group matches the current food group for the post that's being displayed and i'll explain that in a minute so i'll update that so if we go to bagels here and refresh in this list here it's only going to show foods that are in the same group as bagels so you've got crackers bread rye cheese coffee cake cheese chocolate cake these are all in baked goods fig bars things like that and then all these will obviously link into it as well if you were in a fish food it would only link to other foods that are in that category so it's a really interesting way to do some internal linking this could be in a sidebar or however else you want to do it we could do it on the home page for example you can create sitemaps from this you can specify a maximum of 10,000 urls per sitemap for example you can add it to robots text you can generate that oh we've got to call it something let's call it calories.xml save and generate that okay and it creates so i didn't need to do that <laughs> i didn't need to do that okay so there's your sitemap bang very quick and that's all of the urls in this set of data you also got spin tax which can allow you to spin the text which make basically with the programmatic seo site every template is effectively the same spin tax lets you make slight alterations to it by using synonyms and things like that to try and just make it slightly different from another page back in the day i used to use spin tax all the time recently i haven't bothered it doesn't seem to make a difference but it's an option if you want to make your pages more unique and you can just this is like a testing tool and you can copy it and paste it into your template obviously we've got a cache which caches things like the spin tax and the pages themselves which makes it load very quickly and there's a log as well this will give you a short code which you can copy and you could go to pages add new we'll spin up a baked goods page slap that in there i don't like that space there triggers me push publish that and then you've got a list of all the baked goods obviously we could make this a bit more interesting in terms of actually putting things on the page to explain what this list is the last thing we can do is add a home page so we can go new page we'll call it we won't call it home actually because it's not very descriptive we'll call it how many calories are in your food okay and then we can put some information in here from ai and some links into the pages that we could create like baked foods publish that view it customize home page settings static page how many calories are in your food publish and as you can see we've got a pretty decent site that we spun up very quickly the baked food page now lists all of the different baked foods and if we click into any of these it goes straight to the page which has more information the last thing we could do is look at adding an image to the template i've just done one bagel here and then the rest default so what we would do is in media we'll just go add new and then i need to quickly get these files from my desktop throw them in there so we've got bagel picture and a default picture that's just whatever if there's not an image available then in the template go into template and then here we can add an image block it doesn't really matter which image we use we'll go bagel just for the hell of it select that and then we'll just go edit as html so in this in the actual file name here we'll just get rid of that and we'll go mpg image which is image and then all of these get prepended with mpg underscore so we'll add that in update that go back to chocolate cake and because we haven't got a specific image for chocolate cake it's going to give us the default but if we go back to the bagel we have an image of a bagel so then you can work on this and update these images and upload them to wordpress and each page will 
display the image as long as it's uploaded from this column. And that's pretty much it. That's how you could build it on the fly. If we update the sheet, any of these values here will get automatically updated. It won't need to rerun an import like it does with WP all import. And obviously both plugins have got their pros and cons, but I think for a huge site with a lot of content, say if you're talking 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 pages of content, I think this plugin is probably more flexible and scalable than WP all import, just because the sheer bloat of the WordPress database, particularly post meta, especially if you're using custom fields and things like that. So this is another option for you to build your programmatic SEO site. And I'll throw a link to this in the thread below. If you have any questions, hit reply and let me know. I might do a more advanced tutorial on this plugin inside practicalprogrammatic.com. And that's it. See you later.